So two of the biggest trends in being able to improve firewall functionality have been in moving away from just talking about ports and really thinking more about being application-centric and, and allowing for the ability to create uh, application-level policies. Uh, the other big trend has been to move away from identification of the IP address and move towards identification of the actual user of the system that generated whatever traffic uh, might have triggered a firewall rule or might have caused some particular issues, so really taking more of a, of a user-centric approach. And again, you can combine both user-centric policies and application-level policies in, in ways, for example, maybe certain users in certain locations are not allowed to run certain applications, you know, full stop. And, and you can create policies along those lines. And I think that uh, in general, as you look at these two big trends, I mean, that kind of points to another trend as well, which is that um, in, in many ways, advanced firewalls uh, should start to at least integrate uh, what we think of as, as IPS functionality, at least as simple or simpler IPS functionality should now be part of an advanced firewall. And ideally, you should have not just simple, but maybe more advanced IPS functionality. And the reason for that, I think from a, from a maybe more philosophical point of view, is that the idea behind firewalls is that they really, uh, the initial versions of firewalls are very much driven by packets and, and by looking at actual network type content. Uh, but attacks have moved up the stack and attacks are now hitting the actual application. And as soon as you start to look at application level issues, that begins to come under the purview of more traditional intrusion protection systems, or intrusion prevention systems rather. And as a result, um, to the extent that you can now integrate IPS functionality or more sophisticated IPS functionality into a firewall, you are going to get maybe a deeper and more broader uh, overall security story. And so I, I definitely think from the perspective of of advanced firewalls, you're going to start to see, or already are starting to see, uh, IPS functionality being built into firewalls directly as well. Okay. Uh, the other big thing I think to, to keep in mind is now as you start to get to firewalls that are maybe a bit more agile, that are a bit more uh, sophisticated, more dynamic, that are that are uh, trying to do the right thing in, in a more up-to-date fashion, uh, you have to imagine that, that uh, more advanced firewalls need to have better capabilities for being able to integrate threat intelligence feeds, so threat uh, intelligence feeds. And these might be feeds of, of known bad IP addresses. Uh, they might be feeds associated with uh, uh, application vulnerabilities and things of that nature. And, and all of that stuff is changing dynamically. And so the firewall now needs to have a mechanism, maybe a, a mechanism for being able to get updated. So there has to be some kind of a clever way to kind of update that mechanism to provide uh, new intelligence. And so actually, I'm going to spell that out um, intelligence. And I think it's also worth spelling out more explicitly that, that part of having better threat intelligence also involves having a better uh, and maybe more uh, easy update mechanism. So a more easy update mechanism. And this is kind of overall, uh, overall, this is kind of looking more towards a story that, that's about kind of improving the overall agility. So I'm kind of, again, if it's a uh, I'll write that more explicitly, but really the idea here is to improve your overall agility. And I, and I do want to point out that, um, you know, as you start to talk about all these different functionalities, things like uh, application level policies and user centric policies and, and having uh, IPS functionality built in, and, and really by this I don't just mean built in, but really built in and uh, integrated carefully. So the idea is that uh, in, in the past, historically, IPSs have kind of worked alongside of firewalls, and they've been essentially two different devices. Uh, and there may be a situation if you need IPS-like functionality, but you also want firewall-like functionality, it makes sense to kind of have one device that, that has both. Uh, but, but part of making that work effectively is that the IPS functionality has to be nicely integrated with the firewall functionality, and, and they have to be able to talk together effectively. Now, all these capabilities uh, that I've talked about, uh, they're starting to now come under the label of what's called a next-generation firewall. So next-generation uh, firewall. Uh, and overall, I mean, there are basically kind of two two ways that the next generation firewall is involved. I mean, you've, you've had some people who have who have been maybe more traditional firewall vendors kind of move into this new paradigm of looking at applications. And, and on the other hand, you might have uh, IPS vendors, and, and IPS vendors have traditionally been uh, experts at understanding application level behavior, and, and the IPS vendors can now um, also provide some firewall functionality. So there's kind of two ways you can you can evolve into a next generation firewall. And I'm going to kind of maybe spell this out. You can start off with a traditional firewall, um, or you can start off with an IPS. And uh, you know, both of these you can you can augment in certain ways to create a next generation firewall. 
And I, I think that the reality is that uh, you know, as uh, threats evolve, you're going to need more and more sophisticated mechanisms for being able to deal with those threats. And in many ways, you, as those mechanisms uh, evolve, you'll start to see an evolution and maybe to some degree a convergence in the type of technologies that are available for being able to address those types of situations.